Yes, here we go. What a guess we've got. Scotland's number one and Craig Gordon snooker partner. <laughs> Hi, Davey Marshall. What is happening? Good, mate. You all right? Uh, good. Thanks for coming on. Mate, get yourself back. Get the balls out, whatever you like. Get the balls No, in fact, didn't get the balls out. I've seen the size of them. Um, as I said, Scotland number one. You must be worried about the competition behind you. Aye, of no, course. No, Lynn Kyle. Kev Kyle's missus. Oh. <laughs> Big Kyle, man. I've heard some of that stuff on the, on the podcast and uh, he gets a bit of pelters for that, doesn't he? Oh, mate, unbelievable, honestly. Um, here's a question for you. First Scotland to qualify, would you get your eyebrows like Jim Leighton? <laughs> the whole Vaseline? Um, aye, how would they end to qualify, mate? To you think sure. we will qualify? I know if the games go ahead, you think we will qualify? I think we've got a very good chance. I mean, uh, oh, the gaffer coming in, it was a tough start with the, the games we had. Um, but I think when you look at the players now, we've got like McTominay, McGinn. I think, honestly, the next few years, obviously, the boy Billy Gilmore's come through as well. So I think his future looks brilliant. Um, it's tough right now because, well, obviously, the, the setting game's away if we go and beat Israel. But honestly, I, I think we've got a really good chance. Yeah, we'll go buzzing, mate. Uh, strongest wrist in Scotland, uh, how'd you get him? Can't say, mate. <laughs> right, back to the start, mate. Uh, how do you get into being a goalie? You shout at field, I hear. <laughs> I used to play at field for the school all the time. Um, Aidan McGeady's dad was your teacher. He was, I. Uh, English teacher for definitely two years. Might have been my full four years of high school, to be fair, right? St Andrews. Oh. Um, but I, I think I played football all the time with my older brother, so it was probably one of the ones that I could play at field for a wee bit and then they'd be like, oh, go on in goals, Rima. Um, wee man, wee, 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 yeah. um, well, because I was playing with my big brother right, and his yeah. mates, you know what I mean? So it was like, uh, I, I was 9 and 10, they were probably 14. Um, and then, I, I just love goalkeeping, mate, to be fair. And then I got a, a trial with Celtic um, and went there and then just loved it, mate. Just yeah, what, did you love, what did you love about it? What did you love about goalkeeping? Um, I don't know, it was just different, mate. I, I don't know, I just enjoyed it. I was naturally quite good at it. Um, yeah. And then when I went for a, a trial, um, as I say, it was I just thought oh, I'm actually got half a chance here, so really enjoyed it. Who, who picked you up for Celtic? I actually answered a um, article in the Evening Times. It was no like, way. Uh, it was just like uh, it was, at the time it was there was no pro youth in that, right. so it was at Celtic Boys Club. So it was just uh, trials. Um, do not remember the wee school at Celtic Park at London Road uh -huh. Primary School. So it was just a trial in there. And the Evening Times phoned up, went in there, and there was like. 3.8 million kids for a trial <laughs> um, and then they separated his own to your positions and there was still like 50 goalies and I was like this is carnage and it was um, now you get the bench you put the bench down as your goal uh -huh. that was literally a trial in a gym hall and I was like this is horrendous but uh, yeah, you could tell most of them were hopeless uh, got through and then eventually got in mate any so other players at the trials that we'd known eh? I don't think so nah. no, honestly mate it was just black the lads the amount of people obviously it was Celtic boys club so everybody uh -huh. wanted to be there um, but no, I don't think for that trials no there would have been anybody and then when did you sign full time 16? aye aye 16 when I left school I knew kind of 6 months um, before I was going to leave school the contract was there do you know what I mean so I was uh, signed and then just left mate, left school after 4 year and straight and you said okay. uh, you said a great youth team man wasn't it? you Lawson beats Sean. Ah, but they're older than me, Lawson and beats her. So, did you, did you just play up? Play up? Ah, uh, yeah, I played up. Um, I had a bit of a weird one because I went in, when I went full time, you could still play under 16s on a Sunday. Right. So, I didn't really play for the youth team um, because there was some lads in the last year. So, they had to I remember Willie saying, Listen, you won't play a lot in the youth team your first year because we need to see give lads a chance. To Who see was the goal there? Yeah? Uh, remember big David Pinkowski? Ah, big Penny, isn't it? Aye, so he was like, he was in his last year. So Willie was like, we need to give the boys opportunity to see if they're going to get another year. Right. So he says, like, next year you play youth team, but you obviously train full time, be on the bench for the youth team, and then on the Sunday you'd always have your, you'd always get your game because you could still Go qualify back, yeah. for 16. So that was the first year, but a lot of my time, it was, which was amazing, I got to train with the first team probably twice a week, phase 16. That was brilliant that that happened, didn't it? Because you would start with the first team and then come back down and train with the youth team after that, is that right? Ah, yes, right, aye. Um, and then... Big Terry liked to, Big Terry again, would love to take the, all the goalies with the first team as much as possible. Uh -huh. And he would say to maybe the youth team manager, what you doing today? If you're not needing the goalies too much, I'll keep them the full day. So we, for 16, I was running about first team goalies. So who were the first team goalies back then when you were 16? Uh, when I first went in, there was Rab, Douglas, Gildy, um, Jonathan Gould. Dimitri Karim was there for a wee bit, but he was injured. Just what was he like, Karim? Big time? He was all right. No, no, he was all right. I, I trained him a few times. 
on my own. Uh-huh. Just used to wear the grey joggies and that other thing. The shite Um So, and then Magnus eventually came in. Um, but they were great. Rab and Gould, they were amazing for me. Yeah. Michael McGovern was... Oh, so he was he, big he, Mac, uh, he was a year older than me, but he had to do an extra year in Ireland, I think, schooling. So we kind of, we joined at the same time. Um, but, I, but Gould and Rab... Would they slaughter you? Uh, Rab wouldn't, he definitely no. He would look after you a lot. Um, Gould, he wouldn't, he wouldn't slaughter you, Gould, but he'd test you. Like, if you were... I always remember, like, coming up and... Obviously, see goalies doing, like, volleys into each other at the start, but Gould, he would... He wouldn't be taking it enough. Whereas Rab would maybe say, he'll, 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 he'll gauge. He wouldn't go easy. Well, I don't know. You would gauge like your ability, but Gould would just be like smashing it. Aye, smashing it. Aye. Uh, did uh, did Gould not used to get abused for something in there? Aye, he was. Aye, aye. But aye, they, they were they were good mates. But I used to get hammered all the time. Aye. Um, what would they do? Just cut his gloves in there? Aye, everything to Gould. Aye, like deep heat in the yard. Just the usual carrying deep heat in the gloves and all that. Um, but aye, Gould was the one. It was Gil- Gildy was a great laugh actually, um, and I see him quite a lot because he was goalie coach. West Brom, was, wasn't he? Uh, he was at West Brom actually, um, and then nearly signed by Gildy, and then he's at Preston now. Oh, is he right? Aye, so um, aye, he's done well. Uh, you had a big reputation, even I remember when yeah. I come in as a young boy, everyone always said to me like, Marshall got the top. Did, did you feel that expectation on you when you were a kid at Celtic? No, no, not at all really. Um, no, I didn't feel expectation whatsoever. Uh, obviously, there's some lads, like, obviously, you hear, you think, oh, because obviously, I had everybody, Aidan, McGee, yeah. was one, everybody was like, oh, Aidan, probably if he was 12, everybody yeah. was talking about him. Um, but, no, I didn't really feel that was me. Um, I think Terry Gamble was amazing for me, he looked after me, and I think everybody knew that Terry, Terry really liked you me. You were Terry's boy, weren't you? Aye, aye, so I, 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 I get that. So maybe people thought I, would, I had a chance, maybe, because of that. Were you there when Shea Given was in there? No, 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 no. no. Um, see Michael McGovern. Have you ever met a goalie that loves getting balls off his face as much? <laughs> the mate? bravest goalie in the world. It's incredible. <laughs> He'd rather save it with his face than his hands, <laughs> wouldn't he? Done. Never caught a save in his life. Mate, it's my turn. Well, Big Mick's done as well, isn't it? I know he's done great. Um, as I say, he hadn't coming in. There was a stage in the youth team where um, he was a year older than me, so he probably at that age the years are massive difference sometimes. Yeah. And I remember um, I was like, I don't know why I've signed here because like Michael's so much better. There. I Did you really think that? Uh, at times I'm just like, as I say, that year can be a massive difference and maybe he would play youth team and I would play under 16s and then maybe in training I'd be like, I feel, I was like, that's so hard. But that's when you've got coaches like Terry can just understand that you need time, do you yeah, know It's I mean? a process, yeah. So when did you first start like joining in full training with the first team? So as in, uh, involved in the game, not just at the start, uh, but involved in the games and that? Yeah. Um, pretty soon, mate, to be fair. I think the first probably six months it was just goalkeeping um, with Terry and all the first team goalies and then at the end of training he did a shooting and that and they would mm. say right Mark's going in and do some shooting get hammered obviously if who, who would hammer him? Aye Sutty and Sutty was the main one that would just hammer anything Tomo um, What just like butterfingers and that? Aye just a pop of Dom wrists and <laughs> just the usual carry on but it was for me I was like a pure massive Celtic fan so it's like six months ago I've got their name in the back of my tap do you know what I mean <laughs> so they're like hammering me uh, but it was difficult. Petrov was another one. Petrov was really, really tough on young kids. Fucking hell, oh, boys. He was really, really tough. He was tough on everybody, really. Yeah. Uh, especially goalies. That was a hard school for goalies, that. Um, so probably about six months was just in the shooting. And then you would get then how the, maybe the Sunday one when the boys, the starters, when they training, you get put into that. And then eventually, obviously Terry must have just gauged it and then chucked in. You ever met, remember making like a big blunder in training? No, I know thinking back now, I made loads of, um, I, but I, just, I remember making, if you make a mistake, I remember making a, it wasn't even a mistake to be fair, but I remember playing first team um, and the lads you came for a cross at the weekend, never got there, maybe got a couple, never uh, never done well crossing wise and then we played a young v old on the Friday and it was literally either one of the coaches must have said to the old team or the old team must have said just put everyone on top of him and I just got abused the whole young v old yeah. um, but it was like a kind of a grown up time do you know what I mean yeah. that, like, and we won the game I will remember that um, but just like a sort of uh, big bobo and that just smashing into you um, just to prove a point like you never done well on Saturday but so that was their way of telling you, Aye, you need to get was, better. Uh, you need to get better. Aye. There was never any chat or talk or say, listen, you need to do that. But it was just like in the games, the young people games were, you know what I'm like. Uh-huh. 
I used, I used to walk, I was bored by them, and it was unbelievable that, to watch it. Know, it was incredible, and then the gaffer would walk around the corner on the, just in time for it, and the standard would just raise. What about the gaffer, Martin O'Neill? Would he ever, would he ever send it to you? No, really, no, he wasn't that guy. Steve Alford was amazing for me, like, he would chat to me now and again. Um, he was really good, but uh, Robbo and the manager, uh, they kind of really dealt with older bands. I don't think Martin O'Neill had an... A relationship, like deep relationship with anybody, really. Mm. But um, but his presence and what he commanded was amazing. Don't know. You said you're nothing when like a fifty year old John Robertson used to like slew one in the stands. Ah, no, <laughs> no. Robbo used to play in the young girl. <laughs> he I was never... drumming, wasn't he? <laughs> but you the other time, Rick Lawson tackled him. No, no. <laughs> Tell us that he just. Oh, it was just a tie. It was just like cause obviously Robbo was very very good, but you kind of left him on. I didn't even go. Ah, you yeah. weren't going, but Ulrich just. Uh, I think it was clumsy and he slipped at the same time, but Roy just smashed him. But Roy, Rob was up raging, absolutely hammering him. Oh, amazing. See, Walford, he was funny as well, wasn't he? Walford? Aye, it was brilliant, because obviously they used to do the, the yellow jersey for the worst player, but he used to go up, but obviously, but stitching, a people stitching people up. He's voted for you, and so it was a, it was a good time. You think back, it was a brilliant. Uh, uh, right, first team chances. Uh, do you find people often mistake the Barcelona game as your debut? Aye, um, I just, and. Uh, I think a lot of people think the penalty save for the, that was the year after the, in the Champions League game for Ronaldinho uh-huh. was like, oh, he saved a penalty and we drew 0-0 and that was it. So, aye, he, because we, we sell it, we used to always draw Barcelona every year, it seemed like. Mm. Um, but yeah, everybody just thinks it was like, that was my debut, chucked in out of nowhere, but obviously the sending half in the first leg. But the first one was a home game against St Johnston and a way to this one, the cup. Uh, did you know you were going to play? Uh, St Johnson, I just got, he broke me on. Uh, he broke me on for the last like 10 minutes, eh? 15 minutes. What? I know, it was. What, and the goalie wasn't injured? No, he broke um, because it was the Seville year uh, and I was on the bench all the time. But I never, obviously, never played on nothing. And I think we were worth 2 or 3 0 up and he broke me on. And I'm thinking, it's nothing worse. Com- coming on as a goalie is like, you can't win it. Eh? No. And I was just like, oh, just don't come near me. So we got through <laughs> that 10, 15 minutes and obviously it was amazing because I played for Selic then. Um, and then I knew I was starting a cup game uh, for Hull um, and we won 2-0 I think we were 2-0 2-0 uh, aye 2-0 mate huh? it aye. Um, so I loved that um, and then see when you're a young goal like that sorry to interrupt you see when you are a young goal like that and you're making your debut are you really thinking like I hope the boy doesn't come near me for the, when he put me on for 15 minutes I was like aye, I was like Ugh, why has he done that it was amazing for me obviously after that I was thinking wow it was amazing but I, at that time, uh-huh. when you're starting a game, it's different. You're just thinking about the full game and yeah. doing well and stuff and thinking about different things. Um, but, of course, when you're young and you put in a club that size, you're thinking you don't want to make a mistake because you remember straight away you might make a good first impression um, and you can kind of handle that. But I, the, the Partick Fischl game was, I wasn't that busy. It was good and the boys done well and it was just good to kind of get, get through it. Get through it. Because good goalies in front of you as well, Douglas, Hedman, brought on the books mm. at that time. Did you feel like the first team was miles away? Or did you always have that wee inkling that maybe Martin O'Neill liked you? No, I never had that inkling, no. Um, I always thought Terry was... You were right again at uh, the first team. Um, but at the, at the same time, I got into the first team because Rab got sent off. So I was probably... If you look back at a young goalie, they'd probably go on loan, come back, get a bit of experience and then go. But mm. just circumstances chucked me in. So maybe I wasn't really thinking, oh, I should be playing. I was probably just... Rolling with it, um, but then obviously injuries for, to Magnus and then Big Rab getting sent off, chucked me in. How was Magnus? He was a character, wasn't he? He was all right. I, I quite like Magnus there, but he was just, just dead soft. Eh? He would like, uh, we would have a massive game and he'd be like, oh, I'm no well. And he, he just wanted to get through stuff. Do you know what I mean? It was amazing for me because I used to always be on the bench. <laughs> and the run up to Seville, I was on the bench all the time. Must um, be good at that then. For me, I swear, I, I can't even. But back at that, you know what it's like, you just don't even think about it at that time. Yeah. I just, I was chucked in, I would have been 18, uh, the Seville year. What was your favourite memory um, of being on the bench in that Seville? Um, I loved like, Liverpool, Anfield away, it was amazing. You on the bench for that? Yeah, I was on the bench, yeah. Wow. It was mad, because Gould, Gouldy left in the January, and I think they must have seen Magnus in the summer, got injured and Gouldy was on the bench and stuff, and then Gouldy went to Preston in the January, and then Magnus must have been injured again, so I kept being on the bench. Um, and it was like a running joke. I was on the bench and we kept like, lucky charm. Right. But then for the final, Magnus was fit and on the bench. Um, but 
It was the right decision, though, obviously, with what he's experienced now. Uh-huh. I had never even played, so do you know what I mean? Would you in Tom with that cane you for getting on the bench for every game? No, I don't, I can't really remember. I was just rolling with me. I was just like I a wee fan. <laughs> I was just so like what age were you at that age? Um, I'd have been 18, because the next wow. year was the Barcelona game when I was 19. But um, I had experience. I remember like the bus journey down to Blackburn and that for the, the game and uh, the running, and then obviously being on the bench at Anfield. When you look back, I was like, how was what, I on the bench? What were the buses like Like going to and coming back to games? Were they big players quite funny? Aye, ah, they were good. I remember the Blackburn game funny enough because I think it was that... Uh, you know, when you're, you're a young lad, you usually sit down the front, but for some reason that Blackburn journey down, I remember I must have been the only seat, I was up the back, um, and the boys weren't happy about the... I think Sunus had came out and hammered them in the first leg, said it was men against boys oh, and yeah, that. So right, they were yeah. talking about that and the way they doing and just having a bit of banter. I remember that bus journey, funny enough, it just sticks in my memory. Um, but uh, it was brilliant times. Who was the main man in that team? Like, see, in buses, who would be the one that would be the loudest? And... Sutty would be the loudest, I think. Uh-huh. Sutty <laughs> would be the loudest. Hammer. They just used to be playing cards or whatever, but, and then Robbo would join in, Tom or Sutty. Um, Everybody else was alright to be fair. Uh-huh. I didn't make, didn't make Lambo up, so. was good with you as well, wasn't he? Lambo liked you. Lambo was brilliant. Uh-huh. I really liked Lambo. Got on well. Um, I remember the obviously a young lad you sit down in front of the bus, but Lambo used to sit with the young lads, didn't he? A lot. Mm-hmm. But for probably four months, we were pulling up to Selic Park on a Saturday, and it was the four years. It was me, Lambo, and two other young lads. And as soon as the bus pulled up, I just got up and walked off. So I was first out the uh-huh. bus all the time. And after about four months, Lambo's went, somebody going to tell him? And I was like, ah, what's he talking about? He says, my captain in the club, I'm supposed to go first. <laughs> four months, I was walking out of the first. Champions League's winner was sitting beside me. I was like, sorry, I didn't even... I don't know if he was taking a mic, but I, I didn't even realise. I was just literally That's storming up. That's his sort of humour, isn't it? Aye, aye, I really like Lambo. Right, mate, we'll go to the first leg v Barca. Uh, do you know, the day before the game, you're not on the bench. I spoke to Mike McGovern last night, and he told me that a guy, Danny Milosevic, was going to sign for Celtic. Right. Went back to Leeds and just never to get his stuff and just never came back. Do you remember that? I remember the name, aye. aye for that game, so for he was that going game, to the bench. Aye, they were maybe going to like sign him for. Ah, oh, okay, aye. So maybe they're probably thinking, oh, I've no play. Aye. Uh-huh. Yeah, I remember the name. I don't really remember the story at that being that round about that time, but right. I mixed probably right. I'm so when do, you, when do you know you're on the bench just the day before the game? Um, I was on the bench kind of all the time then. Obviously, I'd been on the bench the season before. Um, Aye, so aye, it was just kind of normal at that stage to me, do you know what I mean? Um, See, as a keeper, do you, do you think I'm never getting on? You feel more away from it than outfield lads, do you yeah. know what I mean? Because obviously a midfielder maybe try to change a game if you're winning or something, they maybe put on an extra midfielder to, to shore it up or something. But as a goalie, you're just waiting on in an injury or a red card, don't you? Remember that under-21 rule? When aye. T- I was always on the bench I knew I was never getting on mate so I would like hammer pre-match like hey hunters of toast and sweeties and that and be, are you the same as a sub goalie like if you don't get on you hit, eat like hunters of sweeties and that nah not really nah nah I was alright um, but you don't I, I know what you mean you just feel as if you're there but you're no part of it do you know what I mean because you've not played you've not played like 50 games before and the gaffer like kind of trust you that but mm-hmm. as a goalie you can feel even though you're there all the time and I was there for like the Seville run and uh-huh. all the games, you don't feel a major part of it, even though you're right. So, this the, the half time muscle goes right. Are you on the pitch warming up with the uh, rest yeah, of the boys? Just cutting your balls a bit, uh, and then what happens? Does somebody come running down the tunnel? T- t- Terry came running out of the tunnel, um, and I ex- didn't expect him to obviously come to me. He just or maybe the goalie coach, I'll oh, go and get a thing, maybe he's injured or something. Um, and he just gave me one of them, and I was like, oh. Did the arsehole go straight away? No, I just had to run in, I didn't know what was happening. Really? Um, and then he obviously told me on the way up the tunnel, Rab's been sent off, and then I was just like, I need to get ready. And that was it. Um, Nobody didn't really say that, and to be fair, I think they were probably thinking, oh no. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, they're just probably just hoping. Um, you know what it's like now when a young lad comes through, you're just like patting the shoulder and them going with it. But they had, they had two guys sent off, I think they had two guys sent off. and somebody had. Aye, so, so basically it was. 10 against 9, so I was thinking, and I never did a thing today, a couple of pass backs, and then... She just put the, the pass back to her? No, I flicked her a guy's seed. Did you? I, got a, I took a bad touch, so I was like, oh no, I had to flick it, and it's just flicked the boys' uh, <laughs> oh, no. tappy seed band, the whole stadium, I was like, and then I just got to D-Day, I think, right back. How was, it? How was the atmosphere, brilliant? Uh, ah, it's amazing, I just running out, um, obviously I'm running out, I'm thinking to myself, nobody even knows who I'm up here, uh-huh. um, and obviously I've had a season ticket my whole my whole life so um, I was just 
It's so weird. See, after you've done that, can is that everyone else in football easy after you've played in a game like that? <sighs> well, that, I didn't really do it because obviously then I'm thinking straight after the game, I was like, I've just played that. And then I was thinking, I'm not playing the return, no chance he'll get Magnus back or something because Magnus was on loan in Italy at that time. So I was just expecting him to come back. I was like, there's no way he'll play me out there. And then just... just Did he pull you after it and say you're going to play the second game or it? Uh, no, never. Never, ever, ever pulled me. Um, you think that's played... a good thing so that you weren't worrying about it that you were definitely going to play? Uh, I, I, he maybe looked into getting Magnus back for Italy um, on loan and maybe couldn't he or something. Uh, or maybe, I'd imagine they would have checked to see if they could go emergency loan or something. Um, or maybe he just thought, nah, I'm happy to roll with it. I don't know. Uh, I played the league games. Because uh, Rab could have played in the league straight right. away because he was only suspended for the European game. But looking back, he's played in the league game, so he must have thought, oh, I'm just going to play him. See, when Rab, after the, after the first Barcelona game, did Rab sit and chat with you? Like, we got it for him because I think he came on here and said he'd never really even done anything in the tunnel at half time. I know, I don't know. It's just, to this day, I don't know what happened at half time. I don't think MD really. I can imagine Rab, he's not angry at it. And so I can imagine Try starting it, maybe just, uh, just the size of him and the big. The big sales glove zones probably uh-huh. uh, got him sent off. And your mate Beatty got the hook as well, didn't he? I know, I felt sorry for Beatty. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> because I remember the... Because Martin and I used to be the team like an hour and a half before the game, it would just be like 11 surnames read and then it was Beatty. And I was like, what? <laughs> What's he seen here? <laughs> so, um, so, but Beats was so confident, eh? he was such a confident lad, so uh-huh. he, was, he was buzzing, and he, did, and he did really well, and then I, I felt sorry for him, we'll be speaking about that quite regular actually, how uh, it's amazing how little things just change. Uh-huh. Is that a wee bit of luck, isn't it? Is that me, because Beats could have gone score second half, do you know uh-huh. what I mean, and then he's, he kicks on for there, but um, aye, just little things like that. See, because you'd like trained with world class strikers <clears throat> with Larson, Sutton and that, would play against the Barcelona and maybe no, no as don't you as much as it would if you hadn't had these sort of players every day? Um, Aye, possibly, yeah. Um, I always felt we say, like, obviously, me being a fan, we say, like, going through with that team, really, we always felt we could beat anybody. So when you're chucked into it, you still had, like, Henrik and you had, like, Sutty, Tomo, you had big players that I thought we could do. Obviously, going to the new camp, it was like, you knew you were going to win the severe P, but um, what they had done the year before, it was just, there seemed to be, like, a, a confidence that yeah. they could get stuff done. Um, so I don't know if I just felt. Who, who was the best at finishing in that team? Shooting, training and stuff like that? Um, Henrik was Henrik was the best. Sutty, Sutty was so underrated, it was unbelievable How good in my opinion. Say? He was so good, he was so clever. I think um, they signed Big John as well. Um, but for me, they two, Sutty and Henrik, were just a different level. Um, I had Lubo for a wee bit as well, who was... You couldn't read him because he was both fated. Um yeah, but Sutty for me, Sutty and Henrik were different. How was, uh, how was Larson with you as a young keeper? Um, Henrik was just, kept himself to sell really. He had his, his, his mates in the team, um, Big Johan and that. Um, I think he was close to the more experienced boys, but he'd never, he'd never hammer you for a mistake of that. You could tell he would, you'd maybe hear him groan or that if a young keeper made a mistake, but he would, he would be respectful with it. He wouldn't, he, like, he wouldn't be a Petrov and absolutely come for you oh, really? Sutty and Take your piss out, you know. Uh, right, you mentioned the three games in between. <clears throat> How much pressure did you feel like I need to perform well in these three games if I want to play at the new camp? Did you feel that? Ah, that was it, really. Um, it was weird because if it was just, I had, if I'd just broke into the team, I was playing the three games, I would be like, right, I need to do well in this game just because I want to stay in the team. But because you knew there was that game coming up, everybody was like, and probably the manager, the real probably looking, saying, if he has a bit of a nightmare here, I'll need to try and do something. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Uh, so I did reasonably well. I think the Dundee game um, had a bit to do and did all right. Um, and yeah, the games went all right to be fair. So that was good. Right. So trip to Barca. What did you leave mm-hmm. a couple of days before again? Um, I think we were just night before. I think we were just day before. Um, and then straight stadium, trained the night before. Um, I think that was it, mate. Yeah, just who in a room? I can't remember that. Yeah. Oh, would it be another goalie? Uh, who did Mike, Michael was on the bench. It might have been Mick. So it was you, Mike, Mick, uh, is the two was me and Mick going to Barcelona. That was a shambles, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and then, did he, does he do shape or that? Nothing there? No, we watched, I remember watching a video. Um, I think he just, it wasn't like clipped or anything. It was just like a, maybe a half hour video. It would just be silence and lads would maybe just pick up their own things. Um, but nothing too tactical, no. Would you sleep the night before again? I'm sorry. Right 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 I'm sorry. I just, I just, I don't know, he's 
you're just desperate for the game to come. So obviously, maybe a sleepless night and try and get an hour in the afternoon. And then I remember absolutely bucketing the rain, man. So just as we left the hotel, I was thinking, oh, come on, man, give a chance. Still a chance. Yeah. Bucket, slicking it yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then go to the stadium and then it seemed to calm down. And, yeah. and big Kendall was starting as well? Ah, uh, Kendall Did started. that help you? Did, you? did you and him have a wee chat before the game or that? Uh, no, that I can remember. No, he was Kendall was amazing. Brilliant, wasn't it? He was amazing. W- for me, Wallace was on a couple of weeks ago saying that Kendall would have went right to the top. Aye, for me, for all the young lads that came through, Kendall was the, be- the best at them all. Um, he just seemed ready for. He was a man. Wasn't uh, he? he was a man when he was so young. Uh, he was quick, like, and this is these games are what sixteen years ago. He was really, really good on the ball for the centre half, mm. which was unusual back then. Um, he had everything mate honestly it's such a shame man mm-hmm. and then only find out when he comes in and reads the 11 names aye but you know obviously because Mick's not played and I had played the last few games but uh, aye, I didn't really know right up until travelling to uh, Barcelona I'm expecting Big Magnus to walk in for Italy, <laughs> <you know? laughs> <laughs> I was just like oh, please please just look at Magnus at this airport um, but no it was yeah, I just he reads the 11 Um and, and that was us, and that was us camped in 18 yard books for another <laughs> half. <laughs> well, like, not a word said to you? No, no. Um, That's crazy. I, I remember going up on the lift, uh, and I might have been in, just as we arrived, uh, Steve Walford was there, and he's like, You're going to have an absolute world here. Uh, That's this, this so good for you. And I'd pretty probably just say that to build confidence. But that's the only kind of chat um, that I had. I'd imagine Terry with a did a bit of talking. Big Rab was there. Rab was amazing because obviously he was missing out on probably the biggest, well, not the biggest game in his career. Obviously, he did Seville the year before, but one of the biggest places to play. Um, but he was so supportive and that was brilliant. Oh, yeah, um, just if you're standing in the lineup saying, what, what are you thinking of it? It's just a blur, really. You're just thinking, as I say, I was a massive Celtic fan, si, so I'm supporting these lads like mm-hmm. literally 18 months ago. Um, and then you're in the in the starting 11. Um, and you obviously, you you're just thinking about the game. You're like, I just need to get through the game. But like, let's start well, try and stay in the game because you know you're going to under, under so much pee. And you're winning one now, so you've still got half a chance. Um, but yeah, we were probably we were one great in the game. They were just unbelievable. Yeah. We just won the night nights that you saved them. See, when you do hey, hey, your first great save, do you think this is going to be my night? Um, you're buzzing to make your first save, I. Um, even though when you play in a game, you just get you could just. If you make an early save or you do something well early, you do feel, and then if you make three or four, you think you do feel unbeatable. Do you know what I mean? And that night, it was just one of the nights, mate. See, so when you've made the third and the fourth, do you think, <coughs> see, after the fourth night, I'm not, I, this is, I'm going to be like headlines everywhere. Does that go through your head? Nah, no, in the game, yeah. nah, it was too, it was too like focused in the game. Um, got to half time, now, no. Um, and then. Is everyone saying brilliant at half time, yeah? <sighs> I, I just. The usual, just try to keep confidence, keep going, keep focused. Um, the man, I remember the manager talking about concentration all the time, so obviously being young, I, he'd probably try to push that to me, that mm. it, like little thing um, could make a mistake. But And then just the clock just ticking away, mate. And I made a couple of saves second half, and I remember I remember Stephen Pearson going in some run in the last minute, and I thought that was the time, and I thought, that's, that's done, we've actually beat these here. It's unbelievable. Was that the best feeling you've had when that final whistle went? I think it was, yeah. Because of your age ah, and stuff like your that. age and you're a Celtic fan and your family's in the stand and that. What, and so your mum and dad were, were over? Ah, they were there, there, aye. Uh, my brother's in that as well. So, aye, it was, it was a massive thing. You beat Barcelona away, um, well, over two legs. was just incredible. And obviously with the, the Seville happening the year before, then you think to yourself, we can go again here. Do you know what I mean? You get a chance to get uh, to another final and try and, try and win it. What was the dressing room like after you? That was a... Disappointing thing for me because I did interview straight away, so I, I wasn't straight in. I think um, I did check young interview as soon as I went up the stairs. You missed all that for fucking I'd check young. young, I know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I, that, that's a regret really that I wasn't in there straight away. Um, and then uh, well, obviously four or five minute interview and then in. So the lads had kind of calmed down a bit, but um, that was. But was did everyone know clap you in? I right, go clapped in as soon as I opened the door. Obviously the lads clap you in and that and they were buzzing. Um, but I would have liked to have been in there. Like after it, uh-huh. just straight away. And sure, surely Martin O'Neill said something to you after you. I said it's all downhill for here, aye. <laughs> That's what I was his famous quote. Um, all downhill for here, Marcia. And I was like, I didn't really think about it at the time. Um, but then it's amazing then, a couple of hours you sit in the bus, you phone all your, your mates and your, your family and that, but then you go 
next game is a uh, Rangers game in a few days, so you're like, it's just, you just carry on with it. Did you get a two top, did you? Oh, I never swapped that up. Oh, I, 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 I just top. kept mine. Where have you got it? Eh? My mum was got all my stuff in, in her house, aye, so she's got oh, yeah. that. What, um, was there no, your life no go mad after that? Was there no reporters outside your house or not? Aye, it was mad to be fair, because when I went back um, that night, my mum and I still in Barcelona, so I had obviously. When now? <laughs> You're still there, I'm looking back. <laughs> Mads came back, my still dad's still in the new car. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I came back to the empty house and then we were, I think we were training in the afternoon uh, the next day. So I was down at Celtic Park and it was mad, fans outside. And I drove home and my house had just, in my mum's house, she turned the corner and it was like 50 press outside the house. Well, I'd just turned the corner and seen this group. I was like, oh, what's happened here? And then I'd go closer and I went, oh, shit, that's for me. That. So I just carried <laughs> on. Um, and then went down to my mates at the end of the street um, and then just to let it blow over me, I it was just a mad few days. Uh -huh. And then, I, I had you say Ibrox on the Sunday? I know, that was the thing, that was for me, that's the biggest game, like, yeah, Celtic fans' life, do you know what I mean? So, so was that a bigger game for you than the Barcelona game? Um, probably not with the build-up, obviously, because it's Barcelona away, that's the biggest game, but um, if you'd asked me six months before that, what's the biggest game, it would have been... Rangers at Ibrox for me, mm. um, so yeah, you think about Barcelona, how well you've done, and like you've got another games coming up, but going to Ibrox on, on Sunday, and it was, it was a big thing. I've only been to Ibrox once on a bus as a kid. Was that your first time going to Ibrox, or you'd been on the bench before? But um, knowing that you were actually playing, like I don't know, if, I don't even know if I'd been on the bench at Ibrox. You know, but I'd been in the squad. I, I'd been in the squad. How's that? How's that drive to Ibrox? Seeing other Rangers fans and knowing that you're going to be playing. I I, I love that. To be fair, I love the I love going to Ibrox. I prefer playing Rangers at Ibrox than Rangers at Parkhead. I don't know why. I just maybe it's because you know if you beat them, you're annoying so many of them. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, it's it's just such a game. It's hard to describe. Even the lads down south and that they just don't get how how big it is or how. See when like you're driving to Ibrox, see, does Lenny and that get some amount of abuse? Or how? Aye, they get pelted as I. Even the, the 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 dressing room at Ibrox, the, I don't know if it's the same, the wee windies just don't want it in the street, street level. Uh, aye, so they just get hammered and stuff like spat. Well, you can hear it. Can you spat in it? Aye, just throwing everything at the window. I don't know if that's maybe changed now, um, but aye, they used to obviously get pelters if you've won and then absolutely slaughtered if, you're, if you've if you lost. Um, had an unbelievable save in the first half uh, near Stan Varga, OG. <laughs> Aye, it was one of the ones. You'd expect that for Vargan, you need to be on your toes when the boys come in. happened a few times. Uh, <laughs> but no, I, it was one of the games I just, as I say, talked about trying to get through. Um, but just lucky to make a, make a few saves, but it was amazing again. Would that yeah. have been the most surreal week of your life in Barcelona when Ibrox won again? Yeah, that seemed easy then, do you know what I mean? It was just like, within four days you beat Barca away and Rangers away. So uh, it was an international break after that. I remember getting back to Celtic Park. Um, after that, and Robbo pulled me and says, listen, just don't do any press or nothing, just go and take a few days. Because I think uh, Big Kendall had been called up to the Scotland squad. He was flying as well, obviously. Yeah. Um, because you're a young goalie, you probably get more headlines. Um, but he was gone with Scotland. And then they were talking about me getting called up, but I don't think uh, that had obviously never happened. But I think the club were happy with that, just to kind of take a few days. Because it was just going mad, it was crazy. Tell me you got steaming after the two games. <laughs> I can't remember, mate, to be fair, I, was, uh, I probably did say, aye. Would you, go and, would you still go, like, 19, would you still go and hang about with your pals in there? Aye, the lads were all, I just, obviously had that time. I can't really remember what I'd done for the four or five days, um, but it wasn't like now where you just hop on a flight or that, do you know what I mean? I uh -huh. was still 19, um, still on my first contract, so it was just literally, I just go and enjoy it, man. Just what about, uh, what about, see, as a young boy, would they take you on nights at, no, that, that, for me anyway, that group never really had a lot. Maybe they had a secret you lab. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Goal is never getting invited. <laughs> but, uh, no, I don't think he likes uh, last night. I don't think they could have been out in Glasgow, really. I, don't, yeah, I can't well, imagine that. I'd imagine, like, they probably went out for a bit of food or something but um, and a few drinks, but I never really heard that um, too many people having nights out. I remember uh, the Seville game. But did you go to Seville with the club? No, nah, I couldn't go. How was I? I had exams. Oh, I was a year younger than everyone else, so, so I was... All the lads went to, I think they went to that trash on that Tuesday, and then they were flying to the game on the Wednesday, I think. Right. See, I missed out on that, because I was in the squad for right. Seville. So it was like the whole, I say, like, the youth team and that, I think they were leaving first thing Wednesday morning, but they all had the night out on the Tuesday night, and then they went to Seville, and then I went to Seville and the beer for three or four days, 
But as I say, I was in the squad. So You'd rather do that than that. sit on the bench, wouldn't you? I wasn't on the bench, even. Oh, I no, you weren't. I was in the stand. I was in <laughs> Seville wearing my black suit for the full game. So, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, obviously, he's won that Rangers game. Uh, kept your place for the rest of the season. Uh, couldn't I hope to a better start? No, it was, as I say, I never thought about it at the start of the season. I probably thought, oh, I'm going to the bench here and there. Um, probably at the end of that season, maybe going loan or something. And then, then What, you were still thinking that? No, no, after I'd played, that, right. uh, before I'd played, but obviously Rab getting sent off just changes everything, do you know what I mean? Um, if Rab doesn't get sent off, I probably don't play a game. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I just kind of accelerated everything um, and then finished the season and then looking forward to next season. Did you ever make it awkward, do you, and Rab, that you were then playing at 19? No, I never really thought about it too much, which was probably a bit naive for me obviously no thinking about Rab too much but him as an older pro he was amazing eh? was always he? has been I still speak to him now He's, he was brilliant um, and obviously me being young I was all going to make mistakes and be in and out of the team as well so he were knew you, he was going to play Were you worried that summer that it would maybe go back and Rab would start playing or they'd maybe go and sign another goalkeeper is that, mm. a, is that a tense summer waiting to see what happens I thought I would start the next season because of what had happened that um, that season. Um, but you just can't rest it, so like it's especially as a goalie, uh, you just need to perform all the time. But I thought I'd get the chance to start, um, and obviously the manager gave us that. So, uh, right, was it difficult knowing that there was the expectation in the fans because you were a pure fans' favourite, weren't you, at nineteen? Aye, uh, so you're just expected to just that's your, that's your norm, uh-huh. aye. Um, so uh, it comes with pressure, mate. It does, but. Um, probably looking back when you're just 19 when you're going to make mistakes and stuff um, if I hadn't had that Barcelona game you'd probably get a bit more leeway to make mistakes but yeah. everybody's like oh he's not playing that well anymore so maybe it was just a you remember your first big mistake? Um, no, I can, I I can that, remember fucking can others you, can you remember no. that? <laughs> oh, it's probably <laughs> loads, <laughs> I'm trying to block them out um, but no I don't remember anything there's obviously a lot of mistakes along the way but looking back now at my age um you probably expect that, but at the, at, at the time it's tough. Is that when it is tough? See, when you start to make a, maybe no hair cut as good of games and the fans are starting to get uh, on your back, is that tough to deal with at 19? You didn't really get a chance to develop, do you? Because it's like you're a first team goalie now, whereas at 19, most goalies that are playing until they're like 23, 24, eh? I know, that's the thing. Um, that's when I probably never, no having that loan or something to go back on. If you go on loan and you see lads make mistakes and then they get better fit, they can deal with it a bit better. So I just kind of was chucked in, had probably six or seven games where I was just getting by on pure ability mm. and then um, when you make that mistake you've nothing to fall back on so I've never done this before like I've never made that mistake so but at 19 you don't think like you're just thinking I need to do the next game I need to play well next game mm-hmm. um, so I it was probably it was difficult to deal with because then he started to alternate the goalies didn't he? Mm-hmm. He, did, he did change goalies a lot to be fair even before I was playing he would go Magnus, Rab, um, Gildy was in for a bit so he was a manager that, that changed the goalies the goalies not hate that? I hate it, I absolutely hate it. Um, yeah. You'd rather just know where you were. Um, but some managers are like that. I've had managers who chop and change all the time, and other managers who just won't change a goalie, even if he's having, they let him get through a, a bad run. Would Jen- Terry would ever go to him and say, like, listen, you need to get a number one goalie and stick with it? I don't know what, I, he never, have, I don't know what he would have done. I would imagine so, um, because if you're a goalie and you're in, then you're, you're in, you're out, just eventually, no matter how confident you are, it does affect you. So, um, but, I suppose you could look at it and say if he's playing well enough, you'd be you'd be playing. Would you even at that age? Would you ever go and see a manager and say like, "No, I'm Hartman Hill, no. <laughs> um, no, I remember him pulling me the run in, um, and I was playing really well at the time. We'd beat Rangers. Um, it was the last year. It was the year we we lost in the the Sunday, the helicopter mm. Sunday. Uh, we just beat Rangers two one at Ibrox, I think two 0 Maybe I played, um, and then we played. Hibs the next game I think um, and then he pulled us in but he did a lot with the young lads he pulled me I think Big Craig beat a few other young lads and said he was going experience for the running um, I remember him telling me that um, so he put Big Rab in um, and played all the experience lads obviously lost it in the last day but that was a disappointing one because I felt at the time I was playing pretty well but as I say probably a right decision to play the experienced lads in the run-in and then the, obviously the helicopter Sunday, I've never seen somebody devastated in my life. That was just horrendous in that dressing room. Were you on the bench, hadn't you? Aye, I on the bench, I was horrendous. Was so you'd have been like two yards film when that last goal went in? Aye, aye it was just devastating. It was just because it was his last season. Do you know what I mean? Everybody just felt, I couldn't believe it. I literally couldn't, because we went one all up. Um, and then just the, the thought of it after, it was like, you know, in fact, we always get another chance, but that was it. 
done. It was like so final. I was like, this is horrendous. Was he standing but, up when the second goal went in? Can you remember? I can't remember, no. Just wondered what he'd done. Did he just go and sit? Because he, he always stood up, didn't he? Like, ah, it was always, it was like, Jack the Box, wasn't he? Did he go and sit down after that second goal? I can't can you remember. We needed a win, didn't we? Because it was a draw. We'd won a lot, and then Scott McDonald scored one each, and we needed to win. Yeah. And then they've went obviously two one up, and that kind of killed it. And then I just remember the dressing room after was like a morgue. It was horrendous. Um, so in the base, did anyone go like fuck? Go mad, or was it just complete? No, silence? it was just yeah. complete. Like couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it. I think everybody just thought we'd. It wasn't any, like arrogance or that, but I just with that team, I was just like, no, this like that team gets stuff done so we'll, get, we'll win at Motherwell and then sitting in the dressing room we just don't have another chance in it and obviously the the manager going to be leaving and stuff it was like a it was terrible So you just on who you play behind what was it like playing behind Big Bobo? Um, you just knew what you were getting uh, most of the time but you just couldn't really give him the ball too much <laughs> <laughs> I remember that the, in between the two Barca games we played Motherwell at home and he passed me the ball back and then like the strikers closed me down, so I was just expecting Bobo to. Move to, uh, to uh, so I just took a touch and not even really looking, just passed it. And I looked up, and Bobo was like right running towards the halfway line. And I was just at 19, even at 19. <laughs> and I was like, oh, he's done me in there. But then I got hammered for it in the, in the dressing room after that with the manager. Um, and I was like, then you just learn. like. He what did he say? He don't pass about a Bobo? Uh, I had a go at me because that, the, the first Barcelona game, I'd remember I said I'd, he tried the chip. I tried the chip and I, got, I needed to because I took a bad touch so I had to do it. Yeah. But then he had a go, ah, I had a go for uh, fucking about in Barcelona and then, then that. Fucking about. <laughs> um, and then he slaughtered me for that. Um, but I, even at that time I was thinking, fucking hell, Bobo, you could have just made an angle. Yeah, you were out there, do you know what I mean? But he's, uh, ah, he was an amazing player though. Uh. Could you shout at Bobo? Could you like give him a bit during the game? No, he was so good. I had a young lads, Bobo, who was uh, amazing. He's the top uh, he was amazing. Um, he would come in if the lads were having a go at that, he'd stick up for you. Because the defence probably took a lot of stick because our like, m- like very good top players were forward players. Uh, and all the big characters were midfielders big characters, and forwards. Aye, oh, that's forwards mad. The defenders were quite quiet guys, weren't quite, they? Quiet guys, really nice guys. Thank you, Pete. Um, um, <laughs> but there were. The, I think if we're going wrong, like the older lads would maybe look to the, the back lads um, because obviously Sutty scoring 20 a season, John scoring 30, Henrik scoring 50, mm-hmm. uh, Lenny and Lambo are brilliant, Tom was creating, so they'd kind of look to the back lads. So they'd take a lot of stick if things were going wrong, um, but Bobo would be the one that would, uh, wouldn't let that Were happen. you there when Bobo cracked? Aye, ah, Beats was talking about that story, I went in the dressing room. It was after the heart, Hearts at Home, I think it was. Um, We'd concede, I think we'd get beat 2 1 maybe. You in goals that day? I was in goal that yeah. day, aye. It was kind of because of me because I think some, it was, I think maybe John Robertson had a goal for me. I should have came for the cross, but it was never my ball to come for. Um, and at the time in the dressing room, I was like, well, I'd need to see it again, but I didn't think it was me. And then the boys were just having a wee, it wasn't too bad, it was a bit of turn and throwing and they were having a go. Um, at the lads all oh, we've scored two or we've scored and we can't we can't keep a clean sheet. We must have been going through that spell, we couldn't keep a clean sheet. But then Petrov walked in, I think he did an interview and he just hammered. Uh, I think he maybe came for Bobo and he just flipped man. How scary was it? Uh, it was it was always alright, it was just like the incredible Hulk. I don't think he was ever gonna hurt anybody, but uh-huh. but they they lockers in Park Heed, you can actually go inside him. Uh-huh. So Tom was inside his locker and Bobo was just chucking. <laughs> Did he not chuck Jim Henry out of there? Aye, Chuck was a Jim, big, aye, big he was a boy. big boy, aye. Um, aye, but he was, that was the only time I'd seen him go. And it was, to be fair, it was warranted justified, to do that. Uh, aye, it was justified. Because then I remember speaking to Steve Walford and a couple of days later, and he was like, Marsh, it was never your cross to come for. Um, and it kind of settled for there. But aye, though, the attacking lads used to, used to slaughter the, the defenders. Yeah, but, uh, uh, the defenders were very Would good. you never hear go back at them now? Um, no, not really. Just, like, at that, that time, I did say to Rob, well, that's... That's no my boy to come for, and Rob would disagreed. But no, I would never, I would never harm them because I was only young. I had that respect, mm-hmm. you know. What I mean, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't just take it, but I wouldn't, I would certainly wouldn't harm them. But big Bob would obviously stick up for you. Uh, Brilliant. See, just last on hit Edmund, did he ever do cracking moves on you? <laughs> yeah, no, wouldn't they? No, he used to show me stuff. But we used, obviously we used to train at Barrowfield, and then used to get train changed at Celtic Park. So all the goalies would drive Terry, would drive all the goalies up, but be talking about cracking moves in the back of the wall on that. <laughs> and me and Big Rav are just shaking our heads, but I was a strange guy. Would Terry know put uh, Susie on loudspeaker as well sometimes? 
I had never heard of it. <laughs> 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 no, lucky FaceTime was not anything back then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, Strachan's arrival. Uh, what was your initial impressions when you heard that the wee man was getting the job? Uh, I, as I say, I'd never ever come across uh, across him, so it was just um, it was just normal. We just had to deal with it. Mate. Uh, I was looking forward to it. Uh, I'd, I'd only known man one manager my whole career so far, so it was just going to be a, a big change. And what was Strachan? Was he one for like individual meetings? Would he come in and tell you where he's seen you, like what he, what his his plans were you for that season, or was it just the same as Martin O'Neill kind of? Uh, no, he was much more. Um, like talkative for the players, like he would always, he would, he would chat to you, he was much more tactical in terms of him, he would be the main one, he'd take a lot of training, um, he'd take everything really. Do you like his training? Um, I enjoyed that, I really did, uh, um, it was just such a difference for what we had we'd been used to, um, so it was a big change, it was probably easier for me and the young lads to deal with because we were just rolling mate, it was something different, obviously maybe the, the older lads had... They fucking hated it, didn't they? <laughs> I wouldn't say hated it, but... Uh, <laughs> It was a challenge for them, I because they'd been, they were the main men, and rightly so. Uh, whatever they'd done was right, because they were winning more often than not. So. Did Strachan bring in like, double sessions in there? Um, no, no. Nah. Pre-season we did doubles, um, but that's probably pretty normal anyway at most clubs. But no, nah, it would just be a lot more tactical, um, mm. technical passing and stuff, and then we'd, we'd focus on the other team probably more than, than, than we did under, under Manuel. Imagine asking Big Sutton to do a passing drill, man. I, it was just weird, it's hard to say that. I, I can't I, even imagine him doing a passing though, can you? <laughs> he just did his stuff on a Saturday and he was just amazing at it. So, um, but I, it, was, it was just a big change for everybody, man. Did he tell you you were going to be number one? Um, they, they had to sign a goalie because it was only me and Mick, obviously. Um, and he pulled me at the start. The, the big thing that happened for me was Terry was still there. Um, and then Terry eventually like left. Why did he leave? Was that Stratton's choice? I think it was I because he brought in Jim Blythe um, and Terry. Sergeant Slaughter. <laughs> I say he looked like that. So that was a big thing for me, Terry leaving. I remember the guy for pulled me in and says, Listen, Terry's leaving. I'm bringing in Jim. He'll be brilliant for you. Um, I've spoke to Terry um, and he's obviously I've not seen too much here, but I totally trust that you're the goalie, you should be the one that should be playing. Um, so, and I did get the opportunity to start. Um, but I was it was gotten for me at Terry leaving because he was probably the only reason I made it. To the, Would you be to emotional? The first were you emotional when Terry? Like, I we went down. Me and my dad went down to his um, down to his house, um, and he was it was tough for him as well because he had me, Michael, obviously brought through, um, and he'd been at Celtic for years, and he'd started the the goalkeeping school at Barryfield on the Tuesday and the Thursday night. So it was a big thing for Terry and Susie, I think. Um, but he had been he'd been so good with me, and I was at an age where. I was probably like just starting to proper regular first team, so it would have been so good for him to stay. And his coaching was brilliant, wasn't it? That oh, was amazing. Uh -huh. was so good, yeah. Learned, goalie like, watchers used to play. Learned so much. I, I actually but, used to enjoy watching that. Ah, it was good. I met to be training. I was standing watching you. Yeah, it was just camp. so good. Uh, Brotto came in, and it was it was me and him usually done it. Um, How was Brotto's te technique? Yeah, he was technically amazing. Tremendous. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why he never signed. You know, because he signed on loan for like six months, I think. Uh -huh. I don't, I don't know why they never made that permanent. I, I like think it back to Spain. They, they did really well. And Terry was a top man, wasn't he? Oh, he was amazing. Until he about the place. with the young boys and that, eh? Amazing with young lads shooting at the end. All the experienced lads loved him. And as a coach, he was the best. Uh, and then Arthur Boric initially signs on loan. Uh, what were your first impressions? Of that? Was he a madman even when he first came? No, really. He was kind of quiet. He never really gave as much. I think he was like came in and he was, he was like, well, I'm in direct competition with you. Oh, so um, it was a wee bit like that, just thing me. I remember we were sharing games in pre season, and now you're warming another goalie up before a game, and I'd, I'd maybe shanked one. And then he'd just, when it was my turn, he'd just shank like three or four in a row just to piss you off. <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh that's on. not what you need, mate. But he was honestly, after like f two or three months, he, he just realised that oh, he's, he's a good guy, like, do you know what I mean? We were sound. Uh -huh. um, but and when I initially signed, we signed. Obviously, Arthur never heard of him for Paul and Don loan for six months. Me and Michael were like, fucking amazing. Do you know what I mean? Like, what, you thought he was amazing? No, we thought, that's brilliant for us. Because oh, right, uh -huh. we thought, maybe thought, oh, they'll sign a... A big name on a, a big, big contract. A big uh -huh. uh -huh. well, Definitely somebody permanently. Um, and then I'd been told us was starting, so... But then when I came in, 
And then he just blew me away. I was like, this guy's unbelievable. Was he brilliant? Unbelievable. I've never seen somebody that good for consistent for 18 months. He was incredible, mate. And what was he so good at? Incredible. He was just, he was just ever. Great at keeping the ball in it. Aye, he was such a natural goalie. He was brave as a lion. He kicked with two feet. Um, honestly, he should, he should have kicked on, really. Aye, he should have uh, been a uh, Aye. Um, I think eventually he had a, Good time in Glasgow, do you know what I mean? <laughs> I remember it, it was funny, man. He oh, his was head, didn't he? <laughs> Aye, but um, as a goalie, man, he was. Could you get a laugh at him? Was. Um, no, he, no, really, he was, was kind of tight with Stan Petrov and Big Stan Barg, I think. Well, that would have been um, a good laugh, yeah. <laughs> that was something like that. <laughs> but he had his family over a lot, Arthur, his brother and stuff. Um, but he was, no, for me, he was different class. Uh-huh. I'm keep up. Uh, how damaged him in the first two games for you? Five 0 Armenia and four 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 four. Sorry, the mother. Yeah. That that just that was it. Killed for you. Me. Aye. Um, I remember the, the manager pulling me in the after the. I think we played Armenia, Motherwell, and then the, it was a the return leg, and he pulled me in the morning and he says, "Listen, you've not done anything wrong in the games, but he says we've conceded nine goals and and, and two and two, and um, and I feel as if I have to change it. And to be fair, in training, um, Arthur was doing really well as well, so. Um, it was disappointing. That that was the time I knew I was, and deep down I knew I was leaving. Um, but I day two games. If you go and if you beat Armenia and beat Motherwell, I you just never know what happens. Is the high uh, Barcelona for that? Is the low of Armenia the same? Aye, probably. I probably that is that just as low. Aye, I couldn't believe that Armenia game. Um, Is it with no pish? Uh, it was just. Uh, we were one 0 down. We were one doing well. Uh, it was one 0 half time. I'm sure. Um, and then just second half, absolute collapse. Big sort of get stretched off. I think he might have played centre half that game. Right. And that killed us. Um, and then I uh, it was probably just the change of players. Obviously, Mokamara in it. He watches this podcast. Um, but I don't know. I think it was just a transition. But uh, obviously, the manager brought a new way of playing and stuff and it just the first few games was just a settling in period like so when did you know your uh, time was up at, at that I can remember that really even at that I, I knew it like in? probably looking back now it was maybe a bit rushed decision um, but I, I felt as if I was in I was out I was in I was out and everybody I was like I just kind of keep being in and out here I was just like oh he's alright um, I didn't want to be that I didn't ever in and out for a Saturday night isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, as a young player like you don't say oh Hope I'm hope I'm in and out all the time at the first team. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You want to be playing I all the time. I was just out all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're in or you're out. Um, but yeah, it was just I knew then I was like, I really need to do something here. I, I want to go and play every Saturday. So did you go and see him? Um, that season just kind of felt felt through. I think, um, and he wouldn't let me leave. To be fair, um, there was a few times, um, and then my agent went in. I think it was like eighteen months later in the January. And he still wouldn't let me go. Um, and then he got Mark Browning, Faye Inverness. <laughs> uh, and he <laughs> let me go. Uh, so he let me go then and I went to Norwich and loan and then got injured after four games, man. So oh, obviously. See, uh, see on Strachan, remember any wee funny things that he said or done? Because he was so sarcastic, wasn't he? Ah, he was really sarcastic. It was just his look he got me all the time. Um, I can't, I was trying to think on the spot, mate, any wee things. Were you there when it was him and Aidan kind of going at it? Aye, that that some, was funny, wasn't it? Aye, they used to. I don't know if it was a love hate. I think it was just a hate hate relationship. <laughs> but it was uh, wee Midge as well when he was because he liked a technical player. Wee Midge, aye, uh-huh. wee Midge Gardine was. Um, he brought him in. Ross Wallace was in, and Aidan was in, and then uh, remember at Barryfield the floodlights had the the big paddy uh-huh. thing. Uh-huh. So but, the guy, well then eleven by eleven, maybe switching round, and the gaffer's talking to the back four or whatever. He's talking to a wee group of lads. Big John Hartson's booting the ball up, as high as he can, and Midges like that. Midges! And he'd just run, but he'd run intensely into, into the, the paddy's floodlight. And I was like, oh, Midges. Why was Stratton stopping? Uh, the back did, right beside him, so, <laughs> like, What's wrong with this? <laughs> ridiculous, huh? The, gaff, the, first. the gaffer was <laughs> loving him. <laughs> Big John's booting it. And he's running and shouting Midgey straight into the floodlight. Midgey did anything to make Big John Hartson laugh, would not he? Anything. Big John's buckled and I was like, what is going on? Because at the time I'm thinking, 
<laughs> Mid, your gaffer loves you like you're flying and training and that. Just keep reading. <laughs> He's running, running into Paddy's floodlights. But I actually so. had the flat one that at that time when the gaffer strike and pulled him saying, I like you, but stop carrying on. The Aye. next day, mate, he went and bought a Neil Lennon mask and he walked, <laughs> walked about Celtic Park on. Uh, so, must have been proud of the legacy you had at Celtic. Do you still, people still speak to you about their games? Ah, yourself, yeah, so just the Barca game you get straight away. I, um, I've been to a few games with my boy um, recently, um, but aye, that's it's it's good. I mean, a lot of obviously I never played that lot. I played forty or fifty games or something, but a lot of lads will do that, and their games will not be remembered. So to remember for that Barca one's special. Right, mate, we're going to Norwich. Uh, Peter Grant to you. Uh, why did things not work out for him with him? Um, they had just kind of come down to the Premier League, so Granty had just been appointed. Um, I went down on loan in the January, got injured at, at Chelsea in the FA Cup and was back up and then signed the permanent that summer. Uh, and he only got to October, we were really, really struggling. I think it was one of the A ones, lads came down, Premier League players leaving and stuff, mm. and then um, everybody loved Granty. He was he actually really similar to Tommy Burns. Uh, he's so enthusiastic. Uh, he was yeah. coaching, um, he just got lost in it. I remember like on a Tuesday night before. Uh, a game we'd been in the morning and he'd be training. You'd be like, the physio would be like, Grant, it's like midday. We've got a game tonight. He would just, he would just get, ro- he would get so into it. Uh, he was brilliant, um, but uh, I just never walked to it. I just probably... any good lads there, big Chris Killen. <coughs> Killen eventually came. I um, was he, was he, was he wild? Because he was wild at Celtic. No, he wasn't. Was he not, that? No, no, he wasn't wild. He wasn't there for long though. Right. Um, any good lads? Who was good lads down there? There was a good group. Big Gary Dockett was there, but was it? Oh, big, Spurs? big no, he's a hit. Uh, oh, mate, is he not a legend actually? Ah, uh, he was good, man. He was funny, Doc. Uh, big D on Dublin was there. Um, Lee Croft, do we know Croft? Uh, Lee Croft with the potato head, uh, huh? Oh, he's the thickest guy in the planet. Any um, stories? Crofty was Crofty actually ended up. I don't know if you remember Crofty ended up in Soccer M doing like a Lee Croft's corner or something. It was the <laughs> stupidest stories ever. He came in because we obviously lived in Norwich. It was like what. Well, uh, farm and stuff in that. Uh-huh. You remember one day he said they'd seen a horse and I'd back a Range Rover. <laughs> he was thinking about getting a bigger motor. And I, was, <laughs> I was like, Crofty, you've not seen a horse in the back of a Range Rover at Sunpo. I did. I was like, no. <laughs> what, in the back seat? <laughs> no, in the boot, a Range Rover. So you can't get a horse in a Range Rover. Um, but uh, he ended up in Soccer M with stupid stories. Like, I think I do remember. Uh, it was like, uh, if you're in a lift, at the top of a lift and it collapses, what you have to do is just time it at the bottom, just jump at the end and you're sweet. <laughs> <laughs> just stuff like that. <laughs> right, we'll move oh, on. Uh, Cardiff. Seven years at Cardiff. We had Joe Ledley on, we've had quite a lot of the Cardiff boys on. Great club. Aye, it's a really good club. Um, it's a, like one, one, city, one club in the city, so it's like there's a lot of expectation. It's bigger than you think as well. Uh-huh. Um, and obviously the rivalry with, with Swansea. Um, but it's a great city, brilliant place, like the club done well. It's first season at Cardiff, mm. uh, nearly Premier League football, but lost 3 2 to Blackpool in the playoff final. Memories of that day. That was my worst day in football. That. Was it? it was worst day in football, yeah? Aye, definitely. Um, Did you think you should beat Blackpool? Because <coughs> they, they kind of got in the playoffs late, didn't they? <coughs> ah, but they were flying. flying if you look uh, back at their team, um, I think the boy Seamus Coleman was a right back. Uh, Big Charlie was flying at the time. Um, I remember, I do remember watching, they played Forest in the semis and we were like, oh. Hope. What a game, that, what two legs that was, yeah, I, I remember Black, it. I hope Blackpool win and they won. Um, uh, and I was like, you know, it's not arrogant of that, but I just we just fought, because um, I think we'd beat Blackpool a couple of times during the season and stuff. Um, and we fancied ourselves and we took the lead twice. Um, lost 3-2, it was devastating. Who was your manager that game? Dave Jones. Oh, Dave Jones. Ah, that was my first season there, aye. <laughs> How um, was he, Dave Jones, all right? He was good. He was kind of similar to Mark Neal in terms of know a lot of tactical stuff. He had Terry Burton who did all that. Um, but we had a good, we had a good squad. He signed good players, man. We had Chopper and Ball Freud up front. Charlie's free kick. <coughs> I know it was a good. Do you know? Do you know he was going there? Uh-huh. Aye, it's just difficult. You can't gamble too much of the goal in case he does you. Because he's I mean? got that in him. Yeah, and he's got the power to go the other side, and you can't recover. But aye, it was. Did you, uh, did you say much dealings with Holloway? Like, could you hear him or that? No. Nah, 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 nah. nah, I couldn't, couldn't hear too much. I just remember it was like 110 degrees. That was roasting day. Um, I remember when it went 3 2 half time, the second half was so slow, the boys were done. I mm. thought we were going to really struggle here. We were, I was a player final the week after. Oh, yeah. League one, uh-huh. I was the same, mate. It was so hot. It was, game so was hot, terrible. Uh-huh. What was your score? Got beat on uh-huh. that. How bad is it? The worst. It's horrendous. It's the worst feeling ever. I ran straight off a pitch, straight up a tunnel. And got dragged for a drugs test. So did I. 
unbelievable. Who's in the drugs test? Matt Jelks and Charlie Adam. Oh, I'm just yeah. sitting on that. This is the worst. Did you talk to them? I know the two of them, aye. Uh-huh. But um, the two of them are brilliant, to be fair, because if I was the <clears throat> she was another fit man, I'd have been ordering champagne. <laughs> <at the room>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just a few players that you played with. I've been asked to ask you about Michael Chopper's ice cream tubs. Aye, Kevin said that. Um, I chops used to. He didn't. Eat. He didn't used to um, eat really chops. Weird. Uh, you used to bring. You used to go to Costco now. How they big uh, ice cream tubs you get in the shops. Uh-huh. You used to bring one of them in the morning. Just put it in the the fridge freezer, and that would just be him. A couple of couple of scoops of Couple of scoops of ice cream for his lunch, and then straight to the bookies. <laughs> <laughs> Who else? Bellamy. Uh, Christmas party. Bellamy's fancy dress parties. Um, I had a fancy dress party. So sorry, and never dressed up. <laughs> <laughs> so we've, we've we've all dressed up. Uh, had a right good go as well. We obviously get invited to Bellas house. Um and Sun Belt and Bellas has just got a suit on. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> you're not dressed as a joker now, I spent three hundred quid in makeup. <laughs> what was he like that second time at Cardiff? Good guy. He was very good that time, mate. Yeah, obviously he'd been older and he's come back to his, his proper club. Um but he was he was good with the young lads. He was proper focused then, proper professional. Um, Did he demand high standards? Aye, well, he, would have a, he would have a proper go at lads, aye. A proper go. Um, you know? And everybody. Aye, everybody, if you were doing that, he would just hammer everybody. Um, Did you mind that, eh? No, I didn't mind that at all. No, You'd been used to it, isn't it? Aye, if you're just kind of used to it, the standard, but um, no, he, he was really good. Even managers respected him when he was spoken that in the rest. It wasn't coming to a bad place or that. Um, and obviously, some lads are thinking, oh, shut up, but it was Bellas, you know what I mean? Mm. He was coming back and he was desperate to get his club to. To the mm. Prem, that's the way he was there, but he was no, he was good. Did he still have that Ferrari? Yeah, uh, I can't mean, but he probably did. He probably mm-hmm. three or four, mate. Aye. Love that. Uh, fellow Scotsman Ross McCormick, teammate by character. Ah, he was a character, Ross. Aye. Is he thick? Thick? Like, um, like stupid? Oh, he's just a bit special, Ross, isn't he? Uh-huh. Um, he was that season. Some well. there, oh, amazing. He, that first season, he was he was class, and then he left, went to Leeds. Um, but I uh, was a funny boy. I was a great dressing room, Matt, to be fair. Really was it? Aye, really, really good. Really was good. McPhail there? Macca was there, aye. Oh, McPhail was a great player. Aye, aye. Spoke to Macca last night. Uh, Creepy Lane, who was that? Who lived in Creepy Lane? That was uh, me, Gavin Ray. Um, Kev moved into Creepy Lane. Um, Why was it Creepy Lane? Because you were all creeps? Ah, uh, well, it was Paul Quinn. You know, Quinn yeah, I love Paul Quinn. Oh, he's hilarious. He's funny, isn't he? He, he nicknamed it Creepy Lane because he always wanted to go out with the, the boys a, a beer, but obviously Creepy Lane, we'd always go around each other's houses and uh, <laughs> the wife's and that would come around and we'd have uh, a few drinks, but that wasn't the Quinny scene, man. He, oh, he was desperate to uh, get out. He wanted the boys, he called it Creepy Lane. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any other stories for characters you played at Cardiff? Uh, Stephen Bywater? Aye, ah, Stephen By, I got on so well. It was me and Tom Heaton that were there. The two years got injured. Um, so we had was Tom Heaton there, eh? Heats was there, Is he good? Um, aye, aye, really good Heats. I think he, he was there at Cardiff before me on loan. Then I signed permanently and then he came back. Um, so it was me and Heats and then two years got injured in the run-in. So it was the same Bywater and Boy Brown. It was Aberdeen. Who's that? Goalie. Um, oh, Scott Brown? No, no, no. Is it Cheltenham as well now? I don't know him. I don't know who it was in. Uh-huh. By what? Um, Never heard of you, son. Hilarious. <laughs> um, I were on a bus come back one game one time, and the Cardiff's like five or six years, you know, but it's like you're, uh-huh. like you're doing that. Uh, and we're trying to get a speaker in the bus to get put music on, but the batteries had run out. Uh, and we're like, he's by what? has got the headset on, but the lads at the end, couldn't get the screw and the screwdriver out. Uh, so we're like, oh, it doesn't matter. So by what's like, what is it? I was like, oh, it doesn't matter. But I was trying to get batteries. We can't get these screwdrivers out. He's like, always carry a Swiss Army knife, mate. Oh. A beer or a hell one? And he's like, what are you laughing at? You obviously needed it. <laughs> you carried the Swiss Army. Right, all the time, all the time. But he was a great guy. Yeah. Really, really good guy. Man. Brilliant man. Is he a good keeper now? Um, I did well first, to be fair. Um, as I say, it was me and Tom, uh, the twos were injured at the time. Um, so he came in and played the playoffs. We lost to Reading in the playoff semis that year. Uh, I think it was a year Swansea beat them in the final. Somebody t- came on here and told a story about him fighting with his father in law. You heard that? I have heard the of that story, aye. Aye, <laughs> <laughs> still his father in law to submit. I've heard that. You need to get him on. You he still speak to us? We played um, Burton. That's the last time I spoke to him. Right. Um, but 
Ah, he's a great guy. I need to try and get him one. Uh, right, mate. Malky Mackay followed Dave Jones. Mm -hmm. He got to the club, to the Premier League. Was he, was he good, Malky Mackay? Aye, I loved Malky. Um, what was he good at? I think, well, we're more structured when he came in. I think the the previous, we'd probably better, probably better players under Dave Jones, but then when Malky came in, um, we got as more structured as a team, harder working, fitter. Um, but could he go through, boys, Malky Mackay? Aye, he would. Nah, you could be, they would go through the balls that you would know straight away. Um, so uh, the, probably the standards got higher. I think our team under Dave Jones was probably better. Like, um, but in terms of getting stuff done, Malky, Malky's team was much better. Could you see Malky Mackay being a, a manager again? Do you think he'd be good? I think so. I, I think obviously what happened to him, um, with all the stuff that happened at Cardiff, set him, set him back with being a manager at the minute. But he's obviously doing this, this stuff with SFA. Mm -hmm. um, but I. It's, it's a miss, like, because he is a really good manager, he is. And you were in the WhatsApp group, one, weren't you? I was not. Was <laughs> <sorry>. <laughs> uh, what did you make the Premier League? Uh, toughest challenge of your career? Ah, uh, yeah. As mate, yeah, it's a different level. You were tipped to do really well because you signed the boy Guy Medell and all that, didn't you, for good money? We signed Gary Medell, aye, he was really good, guys. Um, big Stephen Colker joined that summer. Um, is Colker mad at her? Aye, he just loved a night out. Yeah, it, was, uh, it was nothing major, but yeah. um, him. Uh, and Fraser Campbell just loved a loved a night out, uh, but we did we did really well. And then obviously got to January, and the stuff in Malky happened, and then it changed. It was so it was, but we weren't in the bottom three. And then obviously when when they left, um, we fell in there. Who was uh, who were the best players you played played against the Premier League? Who impressed you playing against them? Playing against um, Rooney was unbelievable. Was he? Um, Aaron Ramsey was really good at the time at Arsenal. We played mm. Aaron Ramsey. Um, Were you at Cardiff for him now? He came back on loan when he broke his leg. Right. So for pro, I think in maybe three months or something, he came back. Was he brilliant? Uh, it was him and Bell. Me, him and Bellamy at the time. Uh, so it was. It was really good, man. You could just tell it was a different level. See, on Bellamy, sorry, would you put him in the same class as like Sutton, Larson, in it? <clears throat> Aye. Yeah. Maybe not Larson. I think Henrik's a step, step back. Ah, he just. Different level, isn't he? Amazing. Uh, and then, as you say, a good chance of staying up until all the carry-on kicked off between the manager and Vincent Tan. What, what is Vincent Tan like? We didn't really, as players, you don't really get too much interaction with him, do you know what I mean? He was coming in for before games and stuff. Um, Same what? Just good luck and stuff, just going around and shake your lad's hands. But um, nothing, as I say, you don't really get to see too much. You hear stories and stuff, but you don't really get... Because you know, changed the, changed the badge on it, didn't it? He changed the colour. He changed the colour when we went up the season because they changed it from blue to red and everybody kicked off but we won the league so he was like well he, I think it, red was his lucky colour oh. or a colour for the Malaysia or whatever um, so would he come to training in it? no no he wouldn't, no, he wouldn't come it. to training ground no he'd fly in for games mostly um, and in the Premier League most of the Premier League games yeah. so any had David trousers up to his <laughs> nipples strip, that strip that that. <laughs> unbelievable uh, and then uh, Solskjaer comes in Aye, it was a big change that because we were quite defen we were quite a defensive team. Um and we knew what we were doing. We were never out of games, we would always have a chance of winning stuff and then Ollie came in and he's an attack minded coach. So we signed um Will Zaha and stuff. So we kinda went for like kinda mayor. Who did you sign Will Zaha? We got Wolf and Lone for Manu. Um Manu, aye. Is he um he didn't really he scored for us but he didn't really do he hadn't played a lot and mm. it was just it was just a mess at the time really because we were a team that were quite rigid would be everybody know their defensive shift in that and then obviously bringing in like Wolf and uh, we had the boy Maggie Eichram as well um, Matt's Daly we went for really defensive to quite attacking and we just we couldn't didn't suit uh, didn't suit, no mid-season in the Premier League it was yeah. never going to it was never going to work we brought in um, players like that and it was the same it just never, never did really you see Hings in Solskjaer that you think that thought he could be a top manager I, I seen attacking wise that he would he would never want you to take a step backwards do you know what I mean um, he'd always want to go after the game he would never ever sit back um, it's a different level Cardiff to Man United obviously he's got that budget where he can go and get unbelievable players um, but aye as I say just I don't think it was at the time it was for the, the type of manager that he was replacing it just, it just didn't fit at the time Are you surprised to see him at Man United now? <clears throat> um, aye, if you'd have said to me before I'd have said he doesn't get the Man U job but I think obviously when he went in his temporary and did so well and got it 
<clears throat> um, and he's, to be fair, I think his signings have been really good the last mm. what he's made with Big Harry, um, obviously Juan Bissaka, um, and James have all done well. You know, the boy <clears throat> Fernandez is doing well. So, aye, I, th- I think he'll do well. Would he sit and tell you stories in that, Sosha? Man United, with the Man United day? Um, no, he wouldn't. If you'd, if you'd ask her that, um, but he wouldn't be. He's no arrogant at all like that. No, nah. no, no, no. Um, I remember watching videos um, and about who were playing on Saturday, and they'd be like, like this striker, you can get really close to him and take the ball off him because he says, look at this. He says, I mean, all I, all I has to do there is a double step over and smash it low. <laughs> <laughs> and the assistant manager paused it and went, Oli, keep going. <laughs> And it was just because he was that good. You that could see him in training. He just used to get a ball and just whip it bottom corner all the time. But would he join in? No join in, but if any, like, a, a ball had rolled to him, he just naturally couldn't resist like finishing uh-huh. it. So and would just, you be in goal? Would he ever like, take you from it? Aye, he would just, if something rolled to him, he'd just like, aye. And his finishing was frightening. No, no uh-huh. point in diving. Uh-huh. I mean, so nothing with Tan and Solskjaer, uh-huh. do you not see anything nah, going on? No, I'd never. As I say, the, 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 uh, well, all that stuff went on with the owner. Um, I don't know if he maybe stayed away, but but there was nothing story-wise that... See, like going up that, would you not get a drink with the owner or that now? Uh, no, we never. We had that unbelievable parade, to be fair. Um, but I don't even think, I don't even think he was there, you know. I don't nah. think the owner was there for the parade and stuff, no. How good is that, um, the parade when you were in the league? No, it's amazing, man. Open that, top bus and that, huh? Open top bus. And that city as well, it's like, you're in the castle, the Cardiff Castle. Um, all day, yeah, parade down to the bay and stuff, it was brilliant. Kevin McNaughton steaming, huh? Ah, oh, Kevin steaming, I ste- Kevin my shoulders and that, I've got photos, it was... Aye, it was a great day, man. Was Stephen Thompson there now? No, Tomo just left. Aye. I think I signed the season, Tomo just just, just, left. just has left, aye. Brilliant. Uh, and then, Hulk, so why did you leave Cardiff in? Um, it was a bit of a mess, really, mate. When we got relegated for the Prem, uh, I stayed uh, another year, um, and then West Brom had come in. So I thought I was going to West Brom the year after, um, and then the owner phoned me, and said, oh, 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 I need you to stay for another year. I literally thought I was going to West Brom the next day. Um, and I was like, right, he said, I really think we've got a chance of going up and we won't, we're going to push, like, push again to go up. So I stayed another year. And then it just got to the stage, mate, where we were signing so many players, we were chopping and changing managers again. And it was just, it was just got a bit messy. Um, probably a regret leaving, mate, to be honest. Is it? Um, because obviously the last the, the whole thing never worked out as well um, as I thought it, it could have. But um, yeah, it was probably just probably at the right time where everything was shopping and changing. So we tan phoned your mobile. Aye, he phoned me. Aye, yeah. um, he phoned me uh, just to say that he wanted to have a go. And to be fair, we had a squad, but we signed so many players for the prem, and then we signed so many players in the champ again, and it was just um, honestly we must have had about forty first teamers in the book at the time, and it's just. It was just such a mess. Uh, right, Hull. Uh, didn't they show much more stability there? Steve Bruce had just been sat. Aye. We Mike Phelan, was it him who brought you in? Aye, I think it was a goalie coach, really. Um, who was then, that? Uh, Gary Walsh. Right, oh, uh, right, I played the Man United, didn't it? Aye, uh-huh. aye, so Walsh, he was at, um, he's at West Brom now. Um, but I just, they kinda, they'd been chat through the summer and stuff, and when Steve Bruce was still the manager. Um, and then, obviously, Steve Bruce had left, and Walsh had phoned us, he's like, no, I still kind of want to do it. Um, and then when and then it was Mike Phelan. So Steve Bruce was the only person who left. Um, so his assistant had stayed, Mike Phelan had stayed, everybody had stayed. So it was the same setup really. So right. it was only the manager leaving. But then six weeks later, Walsh went to Villa with Bruce. Uh, he's done you in Walsh, hasn't he? Oh, he's done me. In a bit, <laughs> <laughs> and then the assistant and that went. So it was kind of. But Mick, Mick stayed. Mick was, was really Mick? good. Was really he? good coach. I. Um, but I think it's just. You know what it's like when an assistant takes a manager's role. Never the same, they, they play, it's not, for me, it's never the same. No. no. Did he tell you any yeah. Fergie stories or that? No, no. He was he was good, Mick. To be fair, he was really, really good. But again, as I say, I just don't get don't get worked to it. Uh, loads of trouble. But you start. You were flying at the start, weren't you? When Mick, Mick Phelan first took over. I think the lads. I signed this. No, I signed so deadline day. Up when you signed. Aye, that's exactly what happened. Aye. So we're flying in August and I signed deadline day. <laughs> and then that's when it went. Um, but Because they never signed any players. It was such a small squad. And then they signed like five or six on, on deadline day. And I was one of them. And then just didn't help me. <laughs> it did seem like a pure tight squad. Too. Who was who aye. was good lad? Snoddy, obviously. Snoddy was there. But it, it changed so quickly. Like Our team, you wouldn't believe our team. And then like a year later, who'd left? So you'd like Snoddy, obviously Andy Robertson, 
Um, El Mohamed, Jake Livermore, Tom Huddleston, wow. Sam Clucas, Big Harry Maguire. Um, I, and like, so Snoddy left four months later by Livermore in the January. And then like literally everybody I've named there left that summer. You're still there? So next, so after nine months of being there, I was just like, this is not even the same oh, team fuck. you signed for. So because you get relegated and you just lose lads, but it was literally lost to everybody. How uh, could you tell Maguire and Robertson we got the top, to be honest? Um, obviously you don't know how far they're going to go. Um, but Harry was unbelievable. Was he? Ah, he was incredible. Man. I what, remember we showed him. Well, obviously Maloney was there as well when I signed. Uh, and he was like, a seven and a half is unbelievable. He, he couldn't get a game. It was couldn't one, get a game? No, it was one of the ones like, I remember we played Bournemouth and we lost five. <clears throat> and Harry played. It's one of the ones he didn't really do anything wrong in the game, yeah. but because we could, like he took him out the next game. Take some duty, huh? uh, so it was it ended up being that player. Um and then Marco Silva came in the January and he just must have walked in and fought. It's the best player. So Sean him. just came to you like after training sessions and that and said, by the way, they said I just I speak to Sean quite a lot, but I would say like Harry is like unbelievable. He's got to play and stuff and I trained with him and I was, it was incredible. What, what is he good yeah. at, like, taking the ball out? And ah, taking the ball out. He was like the best dribbler in, at the club and he was like your centre half. He was so strong, such a threat, like set plays and that. Um, he's got everything, mate. Uh-huh. He's faster than you think as well. Yeah. Um, and then Rob. Good lad. Aye, yeah, 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 very down to earth lad. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, Sheffield boy. So he's nice, no, good lad. And Robbo was, Robbo's mentally really strong, I think. I always felt Robbo was like, no matter what, because we obviously be had a bad spell at Hull, but he was always, always like confident, always positive, steady, so uh, positive like always back to himself. So, um, and then he went unbelievable. What he's unbelievable, done, unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm so happy that he's done it, man. It's, it's amazing. We the Scottish boys hanging a bit together. Um, you were a bit older than them, weren't you? <clears throat> I, I I was a wee bit further out. So there were some lads in Hull, um, we Hull was a bit scattered. Some lads in Manchester, some lads in Leeds, and I, I was up uh, Wellaby way. So right. I was a bit further away. So not too much. Um, and as I say, within nine months, no, yeah. everybody had left. I so it was. was so did you get a chance to see a snowy pranker? It? No, really, man. No. Um, as I say, he was gone in four months. He went to West Ham. Um, been in a Scotland squad with Snods, but it's just a wee thing, sorry, that's it's just a wee one liners and that. Uh, it's wee one liners and that. So have you not been in a room when he's done somebody with their pranks now? Um no, nah, I don't think so. I've heard them on the phone a few times in the Scotland squads, just like phoning um who did they phone? Was it Frank Mac, I think? <laughs> did he did Frank? Please tell me he done Frank. He did. He did. He does everybody, but he just gets so bored, I think. He just does stuff. He done me in a summer on holiday. But we're out um but we met him on holiday, so we went out with the wives and uh, the kids and that for a, for dinner. Uh, we, we, Billy Painter. Uh, what a guy, big we, we went. We met him in the, the water park with the kids. We met Billy Painter, Snoddy and myself. Uh, and there was another lad, Bradley Johnson. I played so, the lead in that. Uh, so we were, um, I, I, Snoddy must have known for then. Uh, we were at dinner with the, the wives and the kids and there was an arcade above the, the place we were eating. So the kids were all running about. So go up and check the, the wains are all right all the time. Snoddy's come up, he's like, oh, Brad, are you going out, aye? And I was like, hey, Marsh, are you going out? I was like, no, I'm not going out, man, missus will go mad, like, I'm to holiday by the winds. And he's like, ah, mate, she's like, ah, to me that. Make sure you get David out, because uh, the kid, kids have been a nightmare, he's not even had a beer the whole holiday. And I was like, oh, brilliant, mate, happy day. So I've stayed up with the arcade by the winds for the next so half hour and all that, you know, whatever. I brought them down and I said, right, I'm going to head shell. And she went, how are you going? <laughs> I was, like, <laughs> I was like, what do you mean Snoddy's just staring at me? So I can't even back down. So I had to get two days of the holiday room. Do you know speaking to you? No speak to you for two days. <laughs> oh, I love it. That's tremendous. Uh, feeling was sat in January. Marcus Silva, as you say, came in. Mm-hmm. Got a big move to Everton. Aye. Is he top? Or? I thought like when he came out, it was really good for us, mate. It was really, really good. Um, we were conceding a lot of goals. Um, it just looked as if we were a matter of time, but he changed his run straight away. Obviously, How do you do that? Just get them more organised? Is that what he does? He was demanding it, really, really demanding. Yeah, um, he was he was a def- quite defensive as a coach. Um, you love defensive coaches, mate, didn't you? Ones that keep clean sheets. Ah, uh, uh, it was just really, it was just what we needed, really. Um, yeah. And then, obviously, one of the main things is he put Harry straight in. He was like Kenny's main guy um, and made a few good signings. We signed Markovic for Liverpool, did well. Big Niasi came in for Everton, yeah, and he, he, he did well for us. Um, we should have stayed up really because we got out of the bottom three. Yeah. Um, and I thought once we're out of the bottom three, we'll just there's no chance. 
Um, and then we lost a couple of crazy games at home, um, which I never expected us to lose, and, and we went down. But no, I was I, I really enjoyed working with him, even though he, he, he didn't play me. That's probably one of the regrets. I never really got to play under him as much. Who played? Uh, Eldon Yakupovic played. Um, when Mark when Marco came in, um, the first two games was a League Cup game and an FA Cup game. So I'd played the league and Eldon had played the cups. So he played the first two. And he done well. And he had a worldie. Um, and he pulled me and says, listen, he's played really well, I'm going to play him in the league. So he played me in the, the return leg against Man U, the League Cup. We just lost it 2-1 in aggregate. Um, but apart from that, I never really got a chance. And the wee baked potato sluts again? I, I got injured that, to be fair, so I missed it. Was he not a bit mad as well? I was scatty, aye. <laughs> what sort of stuff? He just struggled like to get his, his, point, across. his point across, aye. Um, but it was... I, I, it was funny in meetings. It was he, he was the opposite. He was quite attacking, so we were flying, going forward, um, but conceding loads. So I, again, it was just a massive change for Marco Silva. You were going to tell us something about a meeting there, weren't you? And then I could, it was just Griggsy in the meeting, man, because Griggsy was there, <laughs> and uh, he used to have really technical meetings. So it would be like the we'd be watching a big screen and the gaffer's on the laptop, and he's like. You have to be there, and he's like, "Where do you think you sh this player should be at this point?" And Griggsy would be like, "I remember Griggsy going, but to the left, he'd move it, and maybe a wee bit." <laughs> and then uh, this guy struggled with language, obviously Russian, broken English and Russian, and he managed to like there. And Griggsy went, "Just a ball here, man." <laughs> <laughs> and even the English boys are like, "A ball here." <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Is McGregor funny? Uh, ah, he's brilliant. Uh, great guy. He's a he's good goalie, is he, not he? Oh, amazing. Uh, so uh, was it used to there together? Uh? I signed when he was injured. Um, he was struggling with his back when I signed, so it was just me and the boy Yakupovic was fit. Because right. he was trying to get fit. Um, he eventually went alone at Cardiff when he got fit in the January and came back. Um, and then it was just me and Griggsy when Slutsky came. Right. So. <laughs> and <laughs> I just a boy. Yeah. And then I, I rolled my ankle in pre-season. So Griggsy stayed at home instead of leaving. And then he ended up playing that season. Um, is he as angry as he looks? No, off the pitch. No, yeah. no. I just, he loses ah, it, yeah, he? Yeah, he's, 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 he's just desperate to win. Uh -huh. um, but he's, nah, he, he's not that angry. Is he a funny guy? Uh -huh. Ah, he's sound uh, uh -huh. really, he's actually really calm. And is funny, he? Yeah. Brilliant. Uh, so why did you leave Hull 2019? Just contract was up. I think they were getting to that stage. Um, we were letting just people go for the kind of the Prem years um, and my family had moved moved back up here as well so I just just fit in just to go away and, and join Wigan and now Wigan are uh, enjoying it I well the last few weeks obviously got out of the bottom three so um, we went for so a spell so safe isn't it delighted oh, that should be us done mate <laughs> <laughs> that's me retiring <laughs> um, so aye, it was a mad we went 13 games or 15 games we thought a win which in some of the games we we never picked up points you're just looking how have we how have we, know, how have we lost that um, but to get the bottom three recently, I were on a good run of form. How was Big Charlie when he came on loan? It was good. He just struggled a wee bit with injuries towards the end. Yeah. Um, he did really well for us. Um, we started playing a lot more when he was when he was at the back. So he's went back to Blackburn now. So I think he's got another year. And I need a, a Josh Windass story off you. A Josh Windass story. The text he sends you. The text he says, te text me about Mbappe's runs last week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like. Um, I text him all the time about football. He's brilliant, isn't he? I love him. Man. Oh, he's, he's, he's infectious, isn't he's he? He's infectious. Eh? He's obsessed with football. Oh, I love obsessed. It. Um, he'll be going off. He's not now because the football stopped. He just don't know what he is. Text me. So. You watching the Hamilton St. Mungo game? Like that, mate. Why are you watching Hamilton? Ah, I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Uh, the, the thing about Josh, he, he goes. Uh, he's got two dogs. I uh, saw how many two dogs. He goes rollerblading me to, to watch his dogs. <laughs> And this is not you telling you any secrets, so you quite happily say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a guy, I love him. Uh, right, lastly, mate, plans after football, next Terry Genoa or management, maybe? I would love to stay in the game, mate, aye. Um, I think, I would get into coaching, as I say, it's, you're a million miles away from the player, it's a totally different thing, isn't it? Um, obviously, you're doing bits and bobs, but I would love to go into it. I don't know if goalie coaching suit, like, I feel that at the minute, so, but I'd love to do some sort of coaching and, and stay in it. Big man, what a pleasure. Top well, man, man. Sam. Cheers, mate. Thank Cheers, you. Bud.